when this, when this, uh, when we are trying to understand together, it's not like somebody knows more and he is giving and I am taking. When we are trying to understand the mysteries of life together, we are exploring together. Maybe I have some, a, little, a few years of more experience, so I am sharing my experience with you. And I also want to share your experience. If that is the level of communication, then something can be learned, something can be imbibed, something can be ins inspired for the children. So it's not only a classroom, it is also sexual, especially when we are talking about sex, the body, food and everything, we are also involving him or her in a way of life, a lifestyle. That is very important. That the whole day he is maybe, whenever he is uh, relaxing at home, he is watching TV or fiddling with a laptop and he is in a very concrete, with absolutely no contact with the sky and the earth and the trees and anything. No contact with, with friends or with no social life. He lives a confined life, then he goes to school or a college and there in one class there is his education about sex. It's got not going to not go to work. <coughs> It is because whenever we say spirituality, we somehow bracket, we, we sort of uh, treat the word in isolation as if it is opposite to worldliness. <coughs> but instead of making these <coughs> distinctions, what is missing in human life is naturality, natural. The way animals, trees, insects, they live a natural life, that naturality is missing in our life. If we are back to our natural life, then education also starts happening naturally, just like the tribals. But yes, to begin with, if you, if you start with 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds, hmm, you start with the idea of the body. What is, what is the body? and all these energy points in the body and this secret of this kundalini that that is the beginning of it uh, of that lesson you can say information all these masks like like vivekananda or ramakrishna or paramananda you know we have seen a, a, a remarkable expressions of energy and where has that expression come from from higher level of perception from higher chakras these things come. Now, for example, Vivekananda uh, was a voracious reader. He loved reading books on philosophy, on history, on, on various things. So when he was young, he used to take from library in the evening two or three very big fat books. And next day, in the evening, he used to return those books and take again three, four, four more books. After a few days, the librarian asked, why do you just take these books? For what? He said, I need to read. Do you seriously read all these books in one night? Yes. Are you sure or do you just leaf through the pages? No, I read them. You can check. You can ask me from anywhere. So the librarian took a kind of a test, just opened at random one of the books and asked him about a topic. And he would say exactly what the book has said. Exactly. Every word, every comma, every full stop. And the librarian said, this is amazing. And he was so young, he did not think it was amazing. He thought everybody could read like this. Later he realized, and then he explained when he, uh, when he used to talk with his uh, followers, that this is nothing special. You too have this power. It is the power of Brahmacharya. It is the power of transformation of energy. That's all. It is nothing extraordinary. Every one of us has these powers only we do not explore them. So there are numerous examples of all these masters. What makes them special? How can they achieve so much in such a short time? It's not like intellectual gain or intellectual wisdom. It's not because they like to keep themselves busy. No. Is because they have the capacity of their mind, the capacity of their brain to retain and express 
thousand times more than a normal person does. And what's wrong with a normal person? He has not known how to use, properly use his sexual energy. Whole gambit of spirituality actually depends on this central point. All the images, Radha Krishna images, are all images of union at the pineal point. Shiva Parvati images are images of the union at the pituitary point. Vishnu Lakshmi images are images of the union at the Anahata, the heart point. All these images, everything, all the icons, <coughs> symbols, are symbols of sex, but higher, heightened perceptions. People don't understand, they just worship these figures and they go on leading a miserable life. That's the problem. Knowledge, information, <coughs> practice of these sciences and now everything is forgotten. That seems a bit unfortunate. There must be some reasons for this. I don't know, maybe misusing this energy, misusing this gyan. So because in India there is also a tradition which uh, how to explain in English. Which that impart knowledge according to the level of, of your containing capacity. Otherwise, it's going to be wasted, it's going to be misused. Maybe for in some cases it is true that people have to be really, even to, uh, to get knowledge or to get some special power or to know something you have to make yourself deserving to, to work hard to come up to that level so that at that level whatever knowledge is available you can grasp otherwise when you're not ready for it that knowledge will destroy you or you will destroy the knowledge why everything has become so esoteric so secret so mysterious and all the wrong information is circulating. Also in the name of religion and Hinduism and, and the Tantra, wrong information, misinformation is circulating. According to the convenience, sciences, whatever, you have, it is, maybe it is the logical to wait for him or her to become deserving. But for uh, sexual education, it is one of basic education, like alphabets. The body decides. Yes, it's like exactly, the body is ready to receive that education. So there should not be any waiting for that. <laughs>